In today's video, I start getting into a little bit more of the nitty gritty of the Pikachu information that I want to share, which is Pikachu's matchup chart and why I think he's so good. And as you can see, I think very, very highly of Pikachu's matchups. Uh, having one for sure disadvantaged matchup, maybe another one, and then a bunch of even matchups, and then a lot of advantaged matchups. I want to go over some of them real quick. A lot of them will be kind of in the same vein, and I will be referencing older matchups or like matchups I've already covered in future matchups, so, so I'm not talking for like three minutes per matchup, so it's not like a th four hour video. So, anyway, let's get started from bottom to top. And one thing I do want to mention is this is my Pikachu matchup chart at top level, at high level, at mid level, at low level. These matchups are drastically different. So take these with a grain of salt if you are not, you know, in the very upper, upper echelons of play, which I'm pretty sure almost none of you are, no offense, like I consider maybe like a small handful of like five to six Pikachus that good. Uh, so these matchups will be a little bit different, but you can kind of tell where I think, kind of use my logic with these matchups and then apply them to yourself and try to get better at the areas that I say are really important that you might not necessarily be capitalizing on as much. Something I want to note as well is this is very to change, like this might not be my final matchup chart, there may be things that I don't know about certain characters or I don't know how certain interactions work that can make things more difficult or easier, so I might think matchups are better when they're not and I might think matchups are worse when they're actually not. You know, there's still a whole bunch of information out there for all these characters of Smash Ultimate, but this is the first matchup chart that I'm releasing after being fairly comfortable with the game after about two months of it being out, I think exactly two months on the date of recording. So this is an amazing, amazing game and this is why I think Pikachu is so broken. I mean, look at that matchup chart. Something to note is I also do not have any of these ordered. It's not like there's like Lucina, let's say, is easier than Mewtwo or harder than Mewtwo. Anything in the same tier is in the same tier. I don't exactly have anything ordered. It's just alphabetical. First off, I think the worst matchup, one of the worst matchups in the entire game, is Pikachu versus Ganondorf. Pikachu outspeeds Ganondorf, out combos Ganondorf, kills actually fairly easily, edge guards the hell out of Ganondorf, keeps Ganondorf in disadvantage. It's really hard for Ganondorf to pretty much do everything, or like anything to Pikachu. If you want to beat Pikachu, you pretty much have to hard read this character. Like, I played against Nairo, which is why I said the parentheses except Nairo in there, and it was still like 16 or 17 to 4, just because that matchup is so, so bad. I really think one of the worst matchups in the entire game. I know I played Salem's Ganon in that matchup and he also thought it was absolutely terrible. So uh, I'm pretty confident that that is one of the worst matchups in the game, probably Pikachu's best matchup. So I uh, put that in its own separate little tier. Bowser Jr. is going to be quite the bad matchup. Kind of a lot of the things that I said about Ganondorf for a disadvantage is really easy. Edge guarding is fairly easy, especially considering you still don't get your cart back when you hit Bowser Jr. out of his up B, which you can do with both Nair and back air, and neither of them pull him into tumble. So that's kind of problematic. It is easier than Ganondorf, however, because he has disjoints. And neutral can be a little bit difficult. If you keep trying to jump at Bowser Jr., they will end up like forward airing you and back airing you over and over again. But Pikachu's size makes it really hard for Bowser Jr. to get any kills, any combos. It just, it's a hard time and also batters your juniors up air is going to be mostly invalidated because of the fact that you can jump away fairly easily skull bash off stage and then go to quick attack so that is a big deal Captain Falcon was already a bad matchup in Smash 4, and I feel like Pikachu's new neutral air kind of makes it really easy to combo Captain Falcon, and Falcon didn't really get anything to make it easier. You know, you can still punish back air and up air. Now with Nair and back air out of shield, which is huge, the kill confirms are going to be a little bit more difficult, because good luck hitting a landing Nair on a Pikachu. You edge guard Falcon, you can combo Falcon, keep him in disadvantage. This matchup just doesn't seem like fun at all. Charizard is the first member of Pokemon Trainer I want to talk about, and this is going to be a little different because I'm viewing them in a vacuum that they don't have the ability to switch, that they don't have the ability to do anything other than play just that character. So it's going to be a little different, and I will talk about Pokemon Trainer as a whole a little bit later because I have him, I think, in like plus one or something. So he, I will get to him, but I do want to talk about just the Pokemon in general. Charizard was honestly a fairly difficult matchup for Pikachu in Smash 4. However, again, landing Nair means that your combo game is going to be so much longer. The fact that Rock Smash doesn't exist for Charizard anymore is going to make your combo game that much safer because you can't really just spam super armor out of your combos. So you're like, oh, you're two or three frames off. Time to get comboed for like a tour hit by like a 28% move. You don't really have access to that anymore. You lost the access to down throw fair at high percents that could potentially kill. And now that Pikachu has a spike in order to edge guard, like you have to make sure as Charizard that you're up being as close as you can to the ledge or you even flare blitzing. But if you flare blitz, Pikachu can still get a lot of damage. You know, just the damage output in general of Pikachu has got a lot higher and Rage has 
also lessened. So it's not as scary to be like, oh no, like I, you know, Charizard's a 140, I'm gonna die, except because Rage is less of a big deal. And also Pikachu has a significantly easier time killing, both with dash attack, with Nair, up smash, uh, you know, up throw thunder still works on him. So it's a pretty big deal for Charizard to like not, like you're not really gonna have Charizard living for as long as you would in Smash 4. So in my opinion, this matchup, just in pretty much every single way, neutral, punishing, you know, advantage, disadvantage, all kind of got easier for Pikachu or stayed the same. Krom is a swordsman with the worst recovery out of all of them, the easiest to edge guard, and I feel like a lot of Krom's game is dealing with landing aerials, which again, as a short character, Pikachu can easily time parries or like outspace with quick attack. It is very hard for Krom to get anything started in this matchup. Losing Krom's side was a big deal because now if you're last stock against a Krom, it is not going to be as scary to try to edge guard or even to get hit at zero. Yes, the consistent killing for Krom is nice, but I feel like it's really hard for Krom to get anything started on Pikachu, whereas Pikachu can combo the hell out of Krom, edge guard the hell out of Krom, keep Krom and disadvantage really easily. This matchup, you know, I played Blank in a couple games and she was very much so worried, like, man, this was one of the matchups I was worried about and my fear is true, this matchup is terrible. So I do not think it is particularly easy at all for Krom. It might be plus one, I may be exaggerating a little bit, but I do not think this matchup is difficult for Pikachu, even a little bit. Like, if you are consistently getting walled out by jabs, F-tilts, back airs, fares, and things like that, that's more so the Krom player reading you because the risk of hitting almost any button as Krom in this matchup is huge because of Pikachu's combo game and his edge guard game and his everything, so it's it's not a good look. Doc is a similar matchup to Smash 4, which I also thought was a fairly bad matchup, but now again, back air always sending out, down air having a spike hitbox, that is going to make edge guarding even easier against Doc, which is crazy because that was already fairly easy in Smash 4. Your combo game, again, has enhanced a lot because of drag down there, so you're not going to get 30 when you get a grab at zero, you're going to get more like 50 or 60, which is huge. It makes Doc's damage output like significantly worse than Pikachu's in this matchup, even though he does have combos, he still has, you know, down B, which is a great kill move that you can kind of hit quick attack out of, or you can just edge trap with it, or you can edge guard. You know, there's a lot of things that Doc has feel still like you have cape to make T-Jolt's kind of annoying, but also, you know, with T-Jolt's being better, uh, you know, you can jump over a caped T-Jolt and like down air or something, get a jab block or like a tech chase. It is just, it feel like it's really hard for Doc to get anything going. I don't know if down throw forward air works in this game or how strict the percent windows are because I haven't really seen anyone get it or anyone die to it. So that might just be my misinformation, but it seems really hard for Doc to get a kill on Pika, especially because, you know, this game, the neutral, especially when you're at high percent is a little bit more passive, a little bit more dash dancey, and you know, Doc doesn't really benefit from that because he's still slow, whereas Pikachu is faster, so it's gonna be even harder for Doc to land those up smashes because you don't necessarily have to commit as hard as Pikachu to really want to get a hit. You can play a much, much better bait and punish game, which Pikachu already excelled at, but now it's even easier due to the new dash mechanics. Falco just kind of gets hit really hard and dies, and you know, a lot of people are scared of losing their jump against Falco or like not wanting to use their jump versus Falco because then they get edge guarded, but Pikachu can jump out Skull bash and then recover just fine always. Pikachu can edge guard Falco, Pikachu can combo Falco, just as I mentioned a lot of pretty much these characters are either really easy combo bait or you can run away from them or it's just it's hard for them to get anything started and I feel like Pikachu's height as well makes it really difficult for Pikachu to get or rather Pikachu to get hit Falco to get anything started so I think this matchup's fairly easy. Ice Climbers are an interesting character, and I could easily see this matchup getting harder for Pikachu over time, but right now, you know, it's really hard to get grab confirms. It's incredibly easy to kill Nana, because you can just kind of back air and back air and back air and edge guard her, juggle her. Popo by himself isn't really that great of a character. You're going to rely on, you know, stubby normals, because they actually made the hammer a lot smaller than they did in Melee and Smash 4, or rather in Brawl. So Ice Climbers don't exactly have as good of a neutral as they used to. You know, obviously their infinite is way harder, and it's a lot more situational. Obviously, they're decent. Their desyncs might get better and their neutral may get better with those desyncs as this kind of character develops because this character is very, very difficult, not easy to kind of pin down. Uh, a lot of things are going to change about this character. I think I saw Kool-Aid accurately describe them as the season two antagonist that no one's worried about yet because this character could still be insane. But right now, I do think this matchup is fairly easier because you can kind of run all over them. You know, you're small and you're light, so it's kind of hard to get the uh, chain grabs because I know that a lot of times a lighter character gets out easier because I have been dabbling with Ice Climbers myself. So, you know, you can edge guard Ice Climbers because they have to pretty much use Belay, and which is their up B, and Pikachu can kind of drop a back air down, like after Nana grabs the ledge, and you can just hit Popo out of it, which is really, really unfortunate. So, you know, having that, having a spike, having all these combos, and yeah, you're not gonna be able to get super long combos against Ice Climbers. That would be like, you know, your Nair loops, because those probably won't work because of the double hit lag, but you don't even need them because you just back air, back air, up air, back air, and things like that. Get them off stage, and then, you know, continue to try to edge guard them, pressure them, keep them in disadvantage, uh, you know, which is really easy. I feel like for 
for Pikachu, especially in this matchup. Isabelle is a zoning character without the proper tools to zone, so Pikachu kind of just hits her. Galagetsin really easily hits her. You know, I'm short, so slingshots aren't even going to be that good. You know, I don't think uh, Fishing Rod is that good. I don't like the Ground Lloyd because especially as Pikachu, you can kind of Thunder Jolt it. You can Edge Guard Isabelle. You can just do, it's really easy to pretty much do everything that you can to Isabelle. I don't think this character is that great, and I also don't think this matchup is any type of hard for Pikachu. Puff, although I think she is a bit better in this game, still struggles with a lot of the same things that Pikachu has, which is the fact that she has to jump because of Thunder Jolts, and once she jumps, you can kind of stay under her as Pikachu, get up airs, and now that up air does like 8% fresh, you end up taking a lot, a lot of damage as Jigglypuff, and because you have Landing there, Up Smash, you have a more reliable air to ground kill confirm that you did not have in Smash 4, and either way, I thought that matchup was really bad in the first place. Once I kind of played Captain L and understood it, you know, after the first time, and he would agree, I think this matchup is fairly difficult for him. Still not going to edge guard Pikachu that hard, not going to be able to kill Pikachu that easily, even though backers better, a lot of her things are aerial, and Pikachu can and stay grounded, especially with Thunder Jolt coverage, it is really, really difficult to get anything started as Puff, even though you're not going to take as much damage from combos because you're so floaty and you're so light, so Nair Loops will only happen like once or twice at most. Uh, it doesn't really matter because the percentage that you're going to need to kill Jigglypuff is incredibly low, so, you know, relatively it's still a lot of percent. Ken and Ryu, I just really don't understand how they're supposed to play correctly as a character. I feel like Pikachu just overwhelms them, can hit their shield, not really worry about it. The fact that they don't have the frame one invincible option means that their aerials are a lot less safe, so Pikachu will easily get his turn with like add a shield Nair, add a shield back air. Keeping them in the air is fairly easy because you have a bunch of multi hits, as I have mentioned with Nair and back air. You have, uh, it's just really difficult. I feel like even if you're gonna like up air Ryu and Ken, like and they focus it, you can just do a second up air unless they dash out. And if they dash out, they can punish their landing with quick attack, so I don't exactly know how this character is supposed to get down. You know, it's really hard for this character. It was always hard for them to kill, uh, rather hit Pikachu, like catch up to them, uh, because Pikachu can still camp, and now the fact that you can drag them off stage with back air and then end up spiking them out of their Tatsu recovery, that is huge. The fact that they don't sweet spot the ledge with their uppies means that forward smash and down air will be absolutely obnoxious versus him, like it's gonna be so, so good versus him. And yeah, you may still die fairly early, but I don't feel like it's a big enough deal to make this matchup not super easy. Uh, and obviously they also can't space with back air due to the fact that auto turnaround is a thing. So it makes it very difficult for Ryu and Ken to get the moves that they want, being that's still their best aerial overall. And yeah, they may get better as people learn their combos and they learn how they work, but right now it seems way too difficult to play this character, whereas Pikachu that can just kind of hit the forward air button and hit the back air button and then win. King Day Day has never really been a problem for Pikachu. It is really easy to hit back Gordo. It is really easy to keep Day Day in the air. Pikachu is one of the only characters that can effectively edge guard and edge trap King Day Day because you have Thunder Jolts, Thunder, Down Air, Back Air, just all those things that I've already mentioned a bunch of times. Uh, King Day Day does is a little bit better, but I feel like again the ability for Pikachu to just have a really good disadvantage by just jumping out and not really caring makes it really hard for King Day Day to get anything started. And yes, I say Day 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 Day, not DDD. -D. I'm just I'm just saying it a bunch of times so you know comments, you know to comment on it. Like, yes, his neutral got better, but at the same time, you can still kind of Thunder Jolt run, and Thunder Jolt run kind of invalidates a lot of people's dashing, uh, so especially if you're not fast and you can't punish the Thunder Jolt, so Day to Day can't really do that, so you Thunder Jolt, you get in, you do a bunch of damage, and yeah, he's really heavy, but again, things like Nair, Up Smash, things like Tech Chases, things like Down Air, Back Air, just Edge Guarding, is going to make Day to Day's life a living hell, trying to live a long time, and even if he does, it's still a very, very hard time in neutral, and because Rage is less apparent, you're not going to be dying quite at, you know, like 40 from a Back Air, it's closer to like 55 or 60, which again is another neutral win, which is very difficult for Day to Day to get, and it's just hard to hit Pikachu in general because he's so small and so fast. King K. Rule suffers from a lot of the things that King Day to Day does, which is he's slow, he can't really do that much in neutral, you know, I feel like his combos are fairly lackluster overall, so he's not going to be doing that much damage, Pikachu can edge guard, Pikachu can keep in disadvantage, because you kind of just like dash under and like bait aerials, bait your super armor, uh, and this, I feel like it's just really easy to just run circles around King K. Rule, you know, the projectile is not that good because you can quick attack in and kind of get your foot, you know, like get your footing, or like a Thunder Jolt Force Day to Day, you know, he either gets hit, even if he's in super armor, but again, like that little bit of damage will tack up over time, you can hit Day to Day really hard, combo him, it's just, it's really hard for him to like ever be in control, that is King K. Rule, it's hard for King K. Rule to ever be in control, ever feel comfortable, and yeah, you do have to worry about like down tilt barry into forward smash at early percents, but it's really not that big of a deal considering you can, you're, one, you're probably going to be in the air for the most part, because forward air, back air, neutral air, you know, things like Thunder Jolt runs kind of invalidate a lot of things, like in terms of what King did or King K. Rule wants to do in neutral, except for like forward tilt, but then you can bait the forward tilt, jump above it, full hop, into down air, into like, 
combos or like tech chases, so it's really difficult for King K. Roll to get anything started. Kirby is pretty much exactly what I said about Jigglypuff, except is then slower in the air, but with a slightly better ground game. However, a lot of ground games are invalidated due to Thunder Jolt and running into them, which is kind of bad for him. And then obviously he doesn't have the air mobility that Puff does, so you can actually edge guard Kirby incredibly well. You can keep Kirby in disadvantage even better than you can against Jigglypuff. So yeah, this matchup kind of just sucks. As I mentioned, Thunder Jolt does make a lot of ground games really difficult to play, and if you can't play a ground game, then Little Mac will suffer, and then you will throw him off stage, and you will kill him. Yes, you might still die, because Little Mac just kills you, but at the same time, Little Mac is so inconsistent of a character that you will assume that you're going to win just from, like, lol, back throw, oh, I hate you out of side B, you're dead. Like, that happens a lot. Mega Man is a character that relies on his pellets in neutral, but because Pikachu is so short and has multi-hit aerials that will beat out pellets, it is very difficult for him to get anything started. The combos for Mega Man are very difficult. Leaf Shield is still very good, but you can actually punish Leaf Shield out of shield with a Nair if you are frame perfect, which I learned at uh, Genesis 6 when I was playing Yeti. Uh, the fact that he lost Pellet into Leaf Confirm means that Pellets, even if he does hit them, aren't going to be as scary. So if you just mash out neutral air, mash out back air as Pikachu, you're going to hit Mega Man, and then it will lead to a lot of percent. He takes so much damage from combos. You edge guard him, you keep him in disadvantage. Again, there's a lot of things I've been saying. So this matchup just really, really tough, and I didn't realize it was this bad until I played Yeti, and that was still with Pellet to Leaf Shield, so now that he doesn't have access to that, you know, being short is going to be even better versus Mega Man, and I think this matchup is fairly easy. Me Brawler may be fast, but I feel like he doesn't actually have enough range to contend with Pikachu, which is funny because Pikachu doesn't even have that much range, but again, Thunder Jolt controls momentum, you're able to uh, keep him in disadvantage with juggles, so like up airs and back airs and just putting him in a bad spot. You can edge guard him even though he has multiple specials that can put him in different areas. As long as you know which special you are dealing with, it is fairly easy to edge guard. And again, if you ever guess right, you just spike them at 30 and they die because why do they give Pikachu a spike? I really don't think this matchup is that tough at all. The Ridley matchup is very similar to a lot of the things I have mentioned about the Kroll matchup, the day-to-day -day matchup, the Charizard matchup, where he has a pretty decent neutral. Actually, he has a better neutral than a lot of the heavies in this matchup because he has neutral air, he has dash attack, down tilt, forward tilt, those are all pretty good moves versus Pikachu, but, but once you hit him, Ridley can't really do much. He takes so much damage. He doesn't have a good landing hitbox at all other than neutral air, so as long as you look out for that, you can pretty much just hit him. You can edge guard him because his recovery is actually terrible, especially now that back air always hits out. It's like, oh, you side beat back air, quick grab the ledge. Oh, you side beat again, except if you don't have a jump, you're probably going to die, or you have to up at a very specific angle, in which case you down air. It's, it's, a, it's a struggle. Even though Rob is a much better character than he was in Smash 4, I do think the matchup actually got easier due to Pikachu's new neutral air and the better edge guarding tools. The fact that Rob can kill you at ridiculously early percents, it doesn't really matter that much versus Pikachu because unless they get a hard read on your ledge dump with a side B, you're not really going to be dying. You don't really get hit by those combos because you're so small and so difficult to hit in the first place. Whereas Pikachu has the big target in Rob. Forward air is still amazing versus him. Back air, landing Nair is so good versus Rob. You take so much damage as Rob if you get hit by Pikachu, it is ridiculous. I've played Wadi and Ape Man, and both of them think this matchup is more difficult than it was in Smash 4, and I thought that matchup was at least plus one in Pikachu's favor, so now I'm confident putting into plus two. You edge guard him, you hit him for so much damage, and a lot of the things that Rob has, you know, you don't have Beep Boop anymore, so you're not going to be scared of dying at 50. They have to actually outplay you unless you do get hit by that side beat, but that is literally the only thing that is better for him in this matchup, and down tilt, but at the same time, a lot of the times, Rob isn't going to be able to get a down tilt due to the fact that you're going to be shooting Thunder Jolts, or you're going to be able to down tilt yourself, and it's, it's really difficult for Rob to get anything started. Robin is Smash 4 Robin except without checkmate and with slightly better thunders and potentially decent Levin arrows, but the fact that Pikachu can rush down Robin at the very beginning of the game and can potentially get a kill, which I have done to Robins, is really, really bad. The, again, back air always sending out means it's very easy to edge guard Robin. You can just kind of rinse and repeat even though Robin does have a better recovery. Nair up smash is going to be huge in killing. Again, you don't have to be scared when you're at 90 to a grab, so you just stay very, very grounded in this matchup. Crawling is even better because you still go under the thunders, and uh, now he can't like just roll cancel grab to kill you at 90 which is a huge deal so he has to hit you with 11 aerials or a thunder and you know it's very difficult to do either of those especially if you commit to staying grounded as Pikachu so do that you know use your down tilts dash attacks things like that it will make your life a lot easier I think this matchup is bad Pikachu is one of Samus's worst matchups in Smash 4 and I do not think that changed Pikachu just kind of runs circles around Samus you keep Samus in disadvantage really easily you can still disrespect bomb a fairly good amount because like even if you hit a bomb and you up air like you're going to be winning the damage trade it's fairly easy to edge guard Samus still because again back 
Packer always sends out Downer. All the same type of stuff as I've been talking about, but now Samus doesn't have like the random burst option of dash attack, which is huge because you're not going to just get hit, so now you have to watch out for like dash grab, sure, and charge shot is a bit better, but I feel like the things that Pikachu got just make this matchup still very difficult. I already thought the Sheik matchup was in Pikachu's favor in Smash 4, which a lot of people was thought was like a highly contested take, uh, but I think now that Sheik really can't kill and does so little damage in a game where everyone does a boatload of damage, this character is just very mediocre at best in every single area. You know, safe aerials aren't going to be as uncommon as they are. You know, it was crazy that Sheik had a safe fair in Smash 4, but now everyone has safe aerials, and you can still kind of like back air or nair and like at least take your turn back and force Sheik to shield, which is really, really nice. You do so much damage versus her. You kill so much easier than her. You have a better neutral than her, actually, because of the fact that you have Thunder Jolt, T-Jolt's back air. So Sheik just struggles a lot in this matchup. We Fit, although one of the more underrated characters in the game, I feel like still struggles with Pikachu due to the fact that you have height and edge guarding and you're very comfortable off stage, and those are still going to be the two places that like We Fit normally is capitalizing on. It's like, oh, well, I can hit landing aerials. I can, you know, camp off of the ledge, and it's really difficult for We Fit to do that versus Pikachu because of the fact that I'm very small. I still like avoid grab sometimes if I'm pancaking with specific aerials, and then like it's hard to get landing aerials because they're very specific timings. Pikachu can either anti-air it with up air or, you know, just parry it a little bit easier because of my specific height and blah, 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 blah. This matchup just, Pikachu just runs the momentum the entire time, and yes, We Fit can kill easier, but so can Pikachu, so it's kind of like a net even. Zelda doesn't have a really great get off me tool, so once Pikachu gets into this slow character with mediocre projectiles, you just take so much damage. You just, you know, pretty much all you have to have is like hope that I got super aggressive in an area where I shouldn't have, and you get a Zelda neutral be the Nehru's love, and that's pretty rare considering you're typically going to be like baiting things with up air and just keeping Zelda in the air the whole time, and it's, I just, I don't know. I feel like down tilt getting worse is huge for this matchup because I'm not going to be scared of getting two framed by that move. Uh, you know, the edge guarding in general is a little bit more rough for Zelda, although you do have the Phantom, which is a very good move. Honestly, one of the better projectiles in the entire game, but I feel like Pikachu's just rush down is so good in this game, and Zelda doesn't have a get off me tool, and if you don't have a get off me tool after you have a rush down, I feel like the matchup is plus two. Zero Suit similar to Sheik, I thought Pikachu already won in Smash 4, one of Zero Suit's worst matchups, and kind of lost the really, really good things that Zero Suit had in terms of rage combos, in terms of, you know, just flip kick being as good as it was, in terms of Nair being as good as it was, you know, grab being such a worse option, no grab combos means that Pikachu can really just outspace with shield, can, you know, down tilt out of Nair range. This character struggles to do so much versus Pikachu. Short characters are really difficult for Zero Suit, and Pikachu, one of the shortest characters in the game, one of the fastest characters in the game, can whiff punish really easily. Dash attack is going to be so good to outspace neutral or with to get kills. I don't know. It just seems really difficult for Zero Suit. You know, I only played Juice admittedly in this matchup, but that it did not seem fun at all. For Bayonetta, I, again, I felt like this matchup was in Pikachu's favor in Smash 4, and so you gain some, you lose some. One, obviously, Bayo lost a lot of the things that made her as good as she was. They're like, There's so many nerfs, I'm not going to go over them, but this character's neutral is a lot worse, the character's advantage is a lot worse. However, you cannot Thunder Jolt against Bayonetta due to the fact that Witch Time will actually still Witch Time you if you are like decently far away with projectiles, so you have to play a little bit more of a standard neutral game, and her punish game out of shield is still incredible with Witch Twist, so you have to be a little bit more careful. Thunder Jolts, you're going to have to either be incredibly incredibly far away so you don't get procced by the witch time or you know up in her face and just kind of like fighting her with without thunder jolts which can be fairly difficult but again she doesn't really kill you unless she gets a smash attack or a witch time you know she can't really edge guard you as well Pikachu can now edge guard Bayonetta because down air actually beats up B and also she doesn't snap to the ledge so if she ever uppies you can either down B or down her after it or forward smash or use thunder it's really difficult for Bayo to get anything started but again she does mitigate your camping a little bit you can't really use thunder jolt as much and she still does a lot of percent when she hits you so you know, she still has a decent amount of tools, but not enough for it to be an even matchup. Bowser is similar to the other heavies, however, uh, he does have slightly better aerials when it comes to the air game, in terms of forward air, in terms of back air, he does have his armor, when, so like, you can't exactly jab him, which like, I do a lot of times out of pressure with like, faring to jab, or like, oh, I hit you, like, I down tilt you do the ledge jab, and you can't jab him at all, so not having access to that move, in my opinion, is a pretty big deal, and also it's still hard to blatantly disrespect him due to the fact that he has down B, and he has uh, down air, so you have to be a little bit more careful with his stall and falls, because they might shield break you and kill you, he's also a lot stronger than the heavies that I've already been talking about, However, you still do hit him and you can deal him a lot of percent. You can still edge guard him, it's fairly easy, but at the same time, limiting your options as uh, Pikachu is always like not good. Like when you can't use an option, I feel like that's pretty bad, uh, especially one as important, I feel like, as jab near the ledge. Also, it is a lot harder to edge trap Bowser compared to Smash 4 due to the fact that his now aerial side B is six frame startup, so you can't exactly react to that and do like a nair out of shield, which is a huge, huge deal, because now Bowser is going to be getting back into neutral a little bit easier. You know, even though it is worse of a landing tool, that getting off the ledge is so important versus Pikachu and Bowser used to struggle so so hard but now his you know ledge options are a little bit
bit more homogenized except for his side B, which is so much better in terms of getting off the ledge. So I feel like that's a very good thing that makes the matchup a little bit easier for Bowser as compared to Smash 4, which I thought was a plus two. Cloud lost a little bit of the ridiculousness that he had in Smash 4 being the ability to control tempo the entire time by running away and charging limit or just camping back here once he had limit. Now Pikachu can actually camp Cloud when he has limit, so it makes Cloud kind of play more aggressive. Cloud's neutral is still fairly solid though, with back air, forward air, and cross slash. Those are going to be his main three tools, and obviously his dashing is really good, but if he's, if you know, focusing on dashing, then you can Thunder Jolt, force him to jump, and then you can kind of hit him from there. You know, Pikachu does edge guard Cloud fairly easily. Again, the fact that back air always ends out, the fact that you have a spike, huge for this matchup, but the neutral can still kind of be obnoxious, and he does a lot of damage, like fair cross slash is like 35, so that's a lot, and if you do get hit by a limit cross slash, you are still going to be dying fairly early, and because, you know, if you ever, like, overcommit to, like, a forward air or something, he can forward smash you and kill you fairly early, but I do feel like this matchup is still in Pikachu's favor due to the edge guarding, due to the fact that you're small so you can parry. Like, if Pikachu kind of forces Cloud to play more aggressive, then you will be winning that game, and if Cloud forces Pikachu to play more aggressive, you are still fine in that regard because you have safe aerials, you have a lot of pressure, and if you do hit him, it can and potentially lead to a stock due to edge guarding. As a similar vein to Cloud, Corrin lost a lot of the things that made this matchup a little bit difficult for Pikachu, although I already thought it was even or in Pikachu's favor, whereas like it's way easier to punish Pin now. The recovery for this character got significantly neutered. I've hit Corrin on their wings now with a spiking downer, which is ridiculous. So edge guarding is a bit easier, neutral is a bit easier. You know, disadvantage is still fairly difficult due to the fact that Corrin still has amazing aerials in terms of nair, forward air, up air, back air. You know, they're all fairly good at, you know, keeping Pikachu in disadvantage, but at the same time, you can kind of just go to the ledge and it's a lot less scary. And if you guess right when Corrin's trying to ledge trap you, you might be able to throw Corrin off stage, in which case you can get a stock. This matchup got a lot more volatile on the side of Corrin, so in my opinion, it does stay in Pikachu's favor. Diddy Kong, honestly, I almost put in plus two, but I don't know enough about this character, but I, again, already thought Pikachu beat Diddy Kong last game, and now he did lose a lot of the tools that he had available to him, mostly in terms of down tilt forward smash. In terms of down tilt up smash isn't going to work as easily. You know, Pikachu can edgeguard the hell out of this character. Pikachu's neutral is so good. Uh, you know, it actually has a decent amount of banana combos. I have been labbing them just to just a little bit so you can actually get some super sick confirms the fact that you have dash attack like banana dash attack is just going to be so good so easy if you get that at the ledge or you get banana up smash like pikachu can kill diddy so easily and i feel like the fact that diddy can't kill pikachu as easily anymore is a uh, huge 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 for this matchup donkey kong does suffer from a lot of the things the other heavies do however he does have his super armor side b so if you hit too many buttons into dk you might die at like 70 or 75 from side b up smash which is very very scary however aerial spinning kong needs a buff as uh, many people have mentioned so you can edge guard this character fairly easily but he does so much damage and he can still kill you fairly early and you still do have uh you know a ding dong window or dko windows i think what they're calling it now it's only like six percent so it's not too bad but it is something you need to worry about and you know the stages may be a little bit volatile because you can grab grabbed on a platform and die a little bit earlier but uh, i do not think this matchup is in dk's favor you kind of just run all over dk you hit him with nair loops forever you deal him damage forever you ledge trap him forever but his damage output is scary enough that i do put this in plus one and not in plus two. Duck Hunt is a character that you just kind of overwhelm. I don't feel like Duck Hunt has enough good get off me options in this game. I feel like down B, even though it's a buff and it kills uh, later, I feel like being able to see it and have the flash means that you don't have to memorize it in terms of which duck comes out first. And it is just so hard. Again, Thunder Jolt is amazing in this matchup. Edge guarding is so easy in this matchup. You know, you don't have, it's going, rather, it's a lot more difficult to get can confirms in terms of like can to up air, things like that. You know, edge trapping in general is still very, like, it's not easy against Pikachu in general. And I feel like the fact that the change can mechanics make it very difficult for Duck Hunt to consistently get what he wants, which is one of the reasons I know like Raito isn't playing the character. He might be playing him at this point, but at least wasn't for a while. So this character just kind of struggles to really get anything started. Like it's still annoying to hit Duck Hunt for sure because he's going to play the very passive wall, the very campy. You know, Saibi's a better move than it used to be, although it did get nerfed from the previous patch. But I do think that Pikachu does incredibly well in this matchup. We just kind of overwhelm him, and once you get in, you do not get out at all. And now the fact again that you can kill earlier with Nair up smash, dash attack, it's not gonna have Duck Hunt living to forever if you miss your edge guards and then also edge guarding is easier in general now especially because of that spike so both me and light do think that pikachu beats fox pikachu does a lot more damage to fox can edge guard fox and yes fox still has a lot of good tools and you still can take a lot of damage from the right combo starters and he still has the consistent kill confirm in terms of nair up smash but you know pikachu has just as consistent of a kill confirm in his nair up smash you know you do have dash attack which is a little bit more like it's a better random kill move i would say than like fox's back air and you still do have again you were able to spike him out of his up b or his side b just edge guard him in general you 
you have to go high as Fox, but then you just kind of take more and more damage, and even if you don't die, you're still taking a lot of damage, because Pikachu's up air does so much damage, why did they make that move to 8? Oh my god. So I feel like Pikachu controls the momentum most of the game, and you know, if in order Fox to win, you pretty much have to outplay your opponent, so I do think that the matchup is slight Pikachu's advantage. Even though I did lose to Light, hopefully I can play him again, because I really want my run back. Greninja got a lot of buffs, and in my opinion, is a pretty scary character in this game. However, there is one thing that I feel like is incredibly important in this matchup, which is the fact that Greninja cannot punish dash attack on shield. There is a fairly universal punish on dash attack, which is just kind of shield grab, but because of Greninja's grab being slower, he actually cannot punish it. You can always dash attack jab or dash attack sidestep or dash attack like roll out, which is a huge deal because now Pikachu has free ways in on Greninja and then can start up mix-ups because if you guess wrong and you want to hold shield and you get grabbed, you take a lot of percent because Shadow Sneak, you can't just like get out of combos for free. And yeah, Greninja does have pretty good killing in terms of, you know, down tilt into forward air, down tilt into up smash, those percents, you know, it's hard to like, you can't really thunder jolt when you're off stage to get safety because you will get shadow sneaked. Uh, and Greninja does have a lot of buffs in this game, but I feel like dash attack and just having like your nair combos, your long combos, because he's a fast faller is absolutely huge in this matchup. Just being able to get in for free with like T-Jolt dash attack is like, it's so easy and it's so scary for Greninja because then you have to guess, you know, guess correctly against Pikachu when he has so many options, like a plethora of options. So I don't think this matchup is that difficult. Ike generally relies on baiting people and getting neutral airs and Pikachu having Thunder Jolt is actually the one that forces Ike to jump and not vice versa. So, you know, the fact that I'm small means I'm going to be able to parry, you know, Ike's nares fairly easily and get punishes due to the fact that I flatten out with back air or can still forward air or like get a dash attack. Uh, this matchup just like, I can tell this matchup's bad because I was talking to Leo and he's like, yeah, like after the squad strike, we played a glitch. He's like, yeah, I didn't want to go Ike just in case I had to play your Pikachu. I don't like that matchup. I think it's bad. Uh, so we would agree on that, that I think Pikachu does win. You can edge guard Ike and kind of put a thunder wall out uh, where he wants to quick draw. So that's a pretty big deal. If he ever has to recover low, you spike him out of it. You know, there's a lot of combos that again, last forever against Ike because of nair loops and just keeping him in disadvantage. Ike's disadvantage isn't the greatest. He kind of has to air dodge or force his way down with like a neutral air, which uh, Pikachu can kind of bait and punish with up airs over and over and over again. Makes the landing fairly difficult. And also I feel like Pikachu already is like his worst stages are Ike's best stages. So you're going to ban them out regardless. Uh, so he doesn't really get stages like Battlefield. And, you know, I would personally ban Stadium in that matchup. So you're not going to have Battlefield in that matchup. So it's fairly difficult for you to get early, early kills, even though Pikachu is fairly light. And again, similar to like Fox. Yeah, he has nair up air as opposed to nair up smash. But again, Pikachu can anti-air. Pikachu can kind of play patient. And if they do swing nair, you can parry it because you're so short and they kind of have to swing it at a specific timing. And then you get punishes from there. And it is just really hard for Ike to get anything started. He can kill you really easily. But at the same time, Pikachu's kill confirms are also still very good. So, you know, take it as you will. Incineroar used to be a much easier matchup for Pikachu before the buff, but I feel like Incineroar making it that much farther from Uppy is fairly scary. You cannot Thunder Jolt camp Incineroar because of the fact that he has revenge. You can't really use Thunder Jolt at all in this matchup. So you actually have to play the mid range bait and punish game, which is very good for Pikachu. And I still think, you know, that plus your advantage state plus your edge guarding does give you an edge in this matchup, but it is scary because Incineroar hits you and hits you really hard. And now the fact that he can kind of try to edge guard you, try to like throw nares out or forward airs to try to hit, you know, skull bashes or, you know, God forbid, if he like nares or forward airs, like a quick attack, he can just kill you really easily. But, you know, Pikachu's damage is ridiculous in this matchup. Pikachu's edge guarding is still ridiculous, even though it used to be even easier. So I do think Pikachu wins this matchup. Ivysaur normally gets away with spamming Razor Leaf, which is incredibly good for her. But at the same time, if Ivysaur ever Razor Leaves, Pikachu can quick attack in and then immediately get mix ups off of it. So Ivysaur is going to lose one of her best tools in neutral. So that's very, very scary for her. And then Pikachu obviously can still do a bunch of damage with nair loops and blah 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 blah. It is actually fairly difficult to edge guard Ivysaur because of the tether going so high. Like you can tether from like almost 45 degrees diagonally above the stage. Like it is ridiculous how far that tether goes. So it's not quite as easy to edge guard as you would think. But also Ivysaur does get edge trapped fairly easily by Pikachu as long as you're watching out for the drop down, uh, you know, like double jump or rather the drop down vine whip. That is a very good option for Ivysaur. But I feel like it is not enough to get rid of like the overwhelming pressure that is Pikachu because Ivysaur doesn't have a lot of great get off me options. So it is fairly difficult for Ivysaur once Pikachu gets in to get out, and it is fairly easy for Pikachu to get in, but you still can get like down aired out of your uh, two frame, which is a huge, huge deal in this matchup because it's actually not that difficult as Ivysaur to two frame, obviously, because down air is ridiculous. So you can sometimes get edge guarded as Pikachu, and I feel like that is what brings it into plus one and not plus two, but still Pikachu's advantage. 
Lucario got nerfed in 2.0, being his Aura Sphere is a little bit worse in order to like combo off of it. So I feel like Pikachu does get an edge in neutral in this matchup. You actually can't Thunder Jolt that much in this matchup due to the fact that Lucario's counter is so good and it tracks you, which is like absolutely ridiculous. But I feel like Pikachu has enough ways to get in. You know, you can kind of shoot Thunder Jolts like close ish. Like you can't use them to like full stage run, but you can use them as like a guess at mid range. And if they do anything other than wait there and then counter it, you're going to get in. Landing there is so good to mix up this character. Like if you landing there behind them, it is so hard for Lucario to punish assuming that you aren't in down air range you know once again you get in it is really hard for Lucario to get you out you have a lot of combo tools you can edge guard fairly easily with back air because it lingers forever and hits always back out and you're not necessarily going to get kills off of it but you will be getting a lot of damage and aura Lucario just seems a lot less scary in general the aura sphere is a lot smaller you know aura in general is less powerful than it used to be so I don't know I'd never really feared this match like I fear this matchup a little bit in Smash 4 just because it was so scary but you know after playing two after playing apology man it does seem like this matchup is a little bit difficult for Lucario because of the overwhelming pressure in terms of Pikachu and also the fact that you have consistent kill confirms just with dash attack in general like if you ever see a punish you dash attack it kills at like 130 and Nair up smash killing means that Lucario won't have as much aura as he used to in Smash 4 it's like oh did you miss up their thunder you might be screwed so like in this game like you're going to be able to kill Lucario a lot easier god forbid you get an early edge guard and so yeah I think this matchup's in Pika's favor. Luigi honestly I might put in plus two but the fact that you still might get grabbed and die is absolutely frightening however other than that Pikachu he wins in pretty much every area. You can edge guard him, you can combo him, you can keep him disadvantaged. You know, your neutral is actually really strong due to the Thunder Jolt, although they can fireball to mitigate that. It just seems really hard for Luigi to, again, as I mentioned, hella times, get anything started, keep Pikachu in, assuming you get grabbed, because I'm actually playing against uh, the Luigi that actually Zero had that video on that he kept Zero to deathing him, and this was, again, pre-patch, and if Pikachu SDIs towards Luigi, like into Luigi, I don't know if I can actually get Zero to death, and if you can't, that's huge, and you can probably put Luigi in plus two or worse, but right now, because you still might potentially die off a grabber you still take a crap ton of percent I'm going to put Pikachu or rather Luigi in plus one because you you literally just throw him off stage and if you guess right like a single time he's going to die Marth is a character that needs very precise spacing in order to get the maximum damage out of his hits and because Pikachu is so fast and has quick attack and has thunder jolt it is really hard for him to really get any of those tippers started or get them consistently at the very least he does have tools that wall Pikachu out such as jab forward tilt you know if you guess right you will be getting a lot of hits but once Pikachu gets in it is hell for Marth Marth to get down. It is so hard for Marth to land. It is hard for Marth to get at disadvantage in general because of up air, because of quick attack, because of thunder jolt, because of neutral air. Marth just struggles. Marth struggles a lot in this matchup, but again, a lot of the times the onus is on Pikachu to get in due to the fact that you can swat away thunder jolt with forward tilt and also hit Pikachu due to the fact that you can nair to jump over the thunder jolts. And if Pikachu ever jumps and you guess right and you backer them or forward to them, it is scary and you still might die at really early percents. And also you have to always keep in mind shield breaker, but I feel like Pikachu is a little bit too overwhelming, a little bit too good at edge guarding and comboing for the matchup to be even so I did put it at plus one. Me Gunner is a dedicated zoner type character and Pikachu gets in too easily in this game for I feel like this matchup to be difficult. Yes she still has charge shot and the fact that it hits lower means that it's able to two frame Pikachu I'm pretty sure at least hit him off the ledge uh, so you can't don't exactly have access to Thunder Jolt a lot of the times in this matchup unless you already hit your opponents but once you hit your opponent in Me Gunner she's going to be taking a lot of damage doesn't have a good get off me tool so once you hit Me Gunner Me Gunner goes for a ride although it is kind of difficult to juggle Me Gunner because of that forward air you have to cover so much distance if they like shine and then turn around or you know if they like back up or kind of like halt their momentum with the forward air so it's a lot of guessing for Pikachu so it's not as easy as a lot of other matchups but the combo game the edge guarding is very much so in Pikachu's favor although Me Gunner did get a lot better at killing you know the forward smash is very good at ledge trapping if you god forbid get up aired you're going to die pretty early but again Pikachu with the strong disadvantage because of uh jump skull bash and quick attack is going to make Me Gunner's juggling very non-existent or fairly non-existent in this matchup but if you do get hit you will take a lot of damage like if they guess right for a quick attack on stage or something. Swordsman has a lot of tools to keep Pikachu down, but unfortunately one thing he does not have is a good get off me option. So once Pikachu gets in, as I mentioned, similar to Marth, it is very difficult for this character to get out, although they do have two projectiles in terms of Chakram, or I think that's the, the, sure, the little side B thing, and in terms of Tornado that can lead to very early kill confirms. But also this character's recovery is fairly exploitable. You know, getting a spike if they ever use like the side B that kind of whooshes them across the stage, that's fairly easy to do, unfortunately. Like it's crazy, but like I've actually down uh, me swordsman out of that or at the very least you like run back and then punish and keep swordsman in disadvantage you know as long as you avoid uh, tornado you're going to pretty much be fine in this matchup because the moves that swordsman have don't really wall effectively enough like let's say a marth or a lucina so you will be able to get in like kind of avoid what me swordsman wants to do but at the same time if you do get hit it is a lot scarier because you know you have tornado to up air you have the you know tilt version of the side b into forward smash which kills you really really early so you got to be careful about that and also again a lot of different custom moves so 
so you have to definitely keep you know your matchups in check in terms of what the custom moves all do but you know there's a generally fairly at least consistent thing in terms of like tornado and the shock run side b or their recovery side b maybe against pikachu because of the edge guarding but pikachu has tools against every special this character has and most of the things that this character has but again you might still die at 65 or 70 from a tornado up air so i did put this at plus one and not worse Pac-Man matchup is pretty much the same. The Pac-Man matchup is fairly similar to what it was in Smash 4, where Pikachu kind of has to do a lot of work in order to get in, but once Pikachu does get in, takes a lot of damage, but that damage is now accentuated, but at the same time, Pac-Man's, you know, kind of neutral options in terms of jab, in terms of forward air, are a bit better. However, I feel like Pikachu's pressure is too overwhelming, his edgeguarding is too good, because especially now, again, he has a spike for, I still don't know why they did that for Pikachu, but I'll take it. So you can edgeguard if they have to recover far, then, you know, you can edge dodge through the trampoline, or at least Thunder Jolt the trampoline either way. If they do side B, you can typically two frame them or hit them out with forward smash if they try to go high or if they try to go low, you can try to two frame them with, you know, downer. And if they hold down, they got it. So like, whatever. I feel like Pikachu just kind of overwhelms Pac-Man fairly easily. Thunder Jolt is still amazing in that matchup. The fact that Pikachu does more damage means that you're able to hit Hydrant a little bit easier. You know, it's not like just forward smash or just forward tilt. Now you can do like double up air to kind of send it at a more awkward angle. So Pikachu can really work with those angles. And again, once you start hitting Pac-Man, he does not have a great option to get out of it. He doesn't have a really good double jump. He doesn't have a really fast, like, invincible shield thing. So it seems pretty difficult for Pac-Man to get out of any pressure by Pikachu, and Pikachu exudes so much that I still think this matchup is in Pikachu's favor. Palutena is a character that doesn't really have a lot of good approach options, and so Pikachu being able to play a great bait and punish style game is very conducive to winning this matchup. Pikachu does so much damage once you get in. A little bit difficult to edge guard her if she ever has her double jump and warp due to the fact that warp, if you do it high, is fairly difficult to punish unless you kind of read it and then quick attack back in with her and continue to get punishes the fact that you can do that is still nice so she doesn't like just get away for free but it is not as easy to edge guard her as a lot of people would think however the neutral i feel like is in pikachu's favor due to the fact that pikachu has safer aerials in terms of forward air and back air has better ground normals in terms of down tilt and jab and even though like i feel like they shouldn't beat palutena's a lot of things but they really do uh you know explosive flame and auto reticle aren't that much of a threat in this matchup because if you're on the ground which you should be in this matchup at least like somewhat like mid far range uh you're either like shooting thunder jolt which in which case you won't really get punished for that or you're kind of like dashing in like mid-range and if she ever throws out explosive flame or auto reticle you jump quick attack in and get your damage the fact that pikachu can play patient in this matchup is so so good for him and i think me nairo and debuzz all agree that pikachu slightly wins this matchup uh you know just a lot of the damage that pikachu does is really good the fact that pikachu is small means that you can get out of the nair loops fairly easily like you get like down throw nair nair like forward air at most if you're like sdiing up and away so that's a huge deal uh so pikachu's like palace damage output so Palu's damage output is slightly going or so Palu's damage output is going to be a little bit worse than Pikachu's in terms of this matchup, and also just like the general advantage state is a little bit easier for Pikachu, since Palu's up air isn't going to be as big of a deal, because again, you can just jump and skull bash out and then grab the ledge, although it is somewhat difficult to grab the ledge due to the fact that Palu's up smash can two frame it, but again, Pikachu can kind of alter his timings very, very like he can vary it very easily. So Palu has to make a guess. Granted, if they do make that guess, then you die pretty early, but at the same time, you can kind of guess as Pikachu to where Palu's recovering and you can kind of get those similar things so not going to be the biggest deal in the world us uh, kind of annoying but the matchup in my opinion still plus one neutral and advantage i feel like are in pikachu's favor for sure i kind of just threw piranha plant on here because i figured that people would get mad if i didn't include him but i do feel like piranha plant's combos are fairly lackluster and pikachu's combos are very not lackluster i feel like even though uh, piranha plant has a good recovery pikachu can edge guard fairly easily due to the fact that the hitbox isn't exactly above him so he can get spiked uh pretty easily however piranha plant's damage output when you're like on the ledge or if you, God forbid you ever get a read with like your side beam to get like a grab, you're gonna take 30 or 40. So Piranha Plant's damage output, although worse than Pikachu's, still isn't necessarily bad, but I feel like the neutral is in Pikachu's favor. I feel like the offstage game is in Pikachu's favor because I feel like, you know, Tui isn't really good. I hate the fact that that's a move name, but uh, Piranha Plant's neutral B isn't really going to be as effective against Pikachu as you would want it to be due to the fact that, again, you have multiple quick attack angles, multiple recovery, just angles in general. Uh, so I feel like a lot of the things Piranha Plant has that are good don't exactly work on Pikachu that well, except for side B cloud, but even then you can kind of quick attack through it uh so i don't know it doesn't seem like that big of a deal this might be plus two or worse but obviously very inexperienced don't almost know nothing about this character so uh, i'm gonna put plus one just because i feel like pikachu's tools in general are better than piranha plants and combo game and just kill patat like pure kill potential in terms of like the things that you will actually hit in this matchup are in pikachu's favor so plus one pit in my opinion wasn't a bad matchup in smash 4 and although he did get some buffs i feel like pikachu's buffs are more numerous i feel like you know the fact that again you can get so much damage off of nair loops edge guarding i say this a lot like I've been pretty much a broken record with my E 
even matchups or like winning matchups rather. I've kind of been a broken record with the winning matchups, but again, it's true. Pikachu's damage output is so good. It's so strong. Pit, you know, has a lot of good things about him and the fact that his moves kind of all work is nice. But again, I feel like Pikachu's neutral is still stronger due to the fact that you have Thunder Jolt, forward air, back air, dash attack, dash grab, quick attack, things like that. You know, even though Bill's like Pit's nair works correctly, that's cool. Like it's not enough to kind of compensate for what Pikachu has now. Pikachu's killing is now a little bit easier because again, you have nair up smash and dash attack. So a big thing was like, it was kind of hard to kill Pit in Smash 4, but that is not the case anymore. Also, Pikachu now again can still edge guard Pit and now it's even easier due to the fact that Backer always sends out. How many times have I said that this video? Oh my God. Can I get a counter of how many times I've said like, oh, well, edge guarding is easier because back air and downer because it is true in all the matchups I have mentioned, but it is kind of like a common thing. So again, Pikachu just so strong. I feel like Pit doesn't do enough off of the hit to really compensate for it and doesn't have a strong enough neutral, like let's say Lucina to kind of like swap Pikachu away constantly. So Pikachu will win. Pokemon Trainer is right here because of alphabetical, but I will talk about Squirtle first and then talk about Pokemon Trainer. So Squirtle, you know, really small, kind of annoying to hit. Pikachu doesn't really like fighting against small characters because you can't short hop forward air in neutral, but you know, the Squirtle's damage output is a lot worse than Pikachu's, even though he does have decent combos. Pikachu's combos are just better. The fact that you're able to edge guard Squirtle, like he, if he has to side B, then you can just kind of back up forward smash, hit him back out, and that's going to like just zoom him off stage and he won't be able to recover, which is fairly bad. Pikachu's killing is really good. Like killing is actually one of the things that I feel like Squirrel struggles with the most because he really doesn't have as hard of a kill throw as he did in Brawl when he was really good. Uh, he doesn't have you know, like just really amazing aerials like he did in uh, the other games. So I feel like Pikachu just kind of runs circles around him, does a lot of damage. And yes, Side B can be annoying to deal with in general, but you know, you just do so much damage off of the hit that it's really not going to be that scary. And again, the killing differential in this matchup is, in what my opinion, that and like Thunder Jolt just being able to approach so Pikachu's neutral is going to be a bit easier. That is what's going to put this matchup into slight advantage. So now let's talk about Pokemon. Pokemon Trainer. So as I mentioned, I do think Pokemon Trainer, all three Pokemon do lose to Pikachu. And I feel like Pikachu's aerials are fast enough that even if, you know, they switch out out of a combo, you're able to like back air. Oh, they switched out. Time to hit them with an up air and then continue your advantage state. Like Pokemon Trainer, even with switching, still doesn't have a solid way down. Pokemon Trainer, even with switching, doesn't have a solid way to recover, except maybe Ivysaur Tether. But God forbid you like, I guess right, or I get a Thunder Jolt Snipe, like you're going to die. So I feel like this matchup very volatile for Pokemon Trainer. There's never really a right answer in terms of switching because Pikachu Pikachu just beats all of them. So in my opinion, the matchup overall is plus one, maybe plus two. I was thinking plus two, but it's hard for me to justify that when Squirtle and Ivysaur are both plus one and not worse than that. So I will put this character in plus one for Pikachu. The Belmonts I was debating plus one or plus two because I feel like Pikachu's rushdown is so good. The Belmonts don't exactly have time to keep Pikachu out. The fact that I can duck under F-Tilt is huge and also run under F-Tilt is huge because that's going to be like generally his best tool for that. The Belmonts have no great get off me option. So once you hit them, you take them for a ride. The fact that you can put your body in front of where the Belmonts want to tether, you know, get hit by the tether, DI down, and then potentially like double jump in forward air if they like trying to like jump in up towards the ledge like that is so difficult for Belmonts to get around. You know, as long as you're patient when they down be the ledge, you should be fine in this matchup. Rosa, I thought was an even matchup in Smash 4, but obviously Rosa is not the character she quite was in that game. You're not going to be dying as early. You're not going to be struggling in neutral as much, especially now with Pikachu's amazing neutral tools. The fact that like back air is so much better and still kills Luma. Like it's so easy to kill Luma for Pikachu now because you can still back air auto cancel safe on shield forward air, forward smash, up air, like you can kill Luma pretty much in every single way, but more in this game. And Rosa, although she does have some cool moves and obviously did get some buffs in the 2.0 patch, I do not think she really can keep up with Pikachu in terms of damage output, in terms of neutral. Pikachu can still edge guard Rosa, like it is a hard time for her to get anything started. And if she does like cool, but at the same time, her advantage state isn't really great versus Pikachu. It never was comparatively to a lot of other characters. And now that her neutral isn't just like jab, 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 oh, Luma's like halfway across the stage. It is way easier for Pikachu to get those Luma kills you just punish Luma in general, punish Rosa in general. So I think this matchup is plus one at least. Roy is pretty much Krom, except harder to edge guard in my opinion, and also with a significantly better side B. The fact that Flare Blade, I think is what it's called, is so strong, stronger than Limit Cross Slash, or at least kills earlier than Limit Cross Slash, means that Pikachu has to be scared at higher percents. However, you hit Roy, and again, he's the perfect combo weight in fall speed. You just, he just dies. He takes so, so much damage. You can edge guard him. Still, like, you can edge guard him. It is a little bit difficult because 
his up B is fairly good at hitting Pikachu out where Pikachu typically edge guards against him, but also Thunder Jolt is really good at hitting him. And then like with a falling fair, like you can you can definitely get edge guards on Roy, but again, the ability to easily kill in terms of side B, I feel like the fact that you are able to get uh, stronger just hits on Pikachu, like Krom does so much less damage than Roy in my opinion in this matchup, especially considering he's not really going to be playing the Swordy game, he's going to be plural more so playing the CQC game. He does so much damage, he's so strong, so I do feel like this matchup is definitely better for Roy than it is for Krom, so it's going to be plus one. Shulk is one of, in my opinion, the strongest characters in the game, however, like, we're Shulk is one of the strongest characters in the game, in my opinion, due to the fact that you have so many options with all the changing the arts, and you're constantly able to just do whatever you need in the scenario, and the fact that most characters cannot combo him through shield dart, however, Pikachu can, and that fact alone, in my opinion, will put Pikachu ahead in that matchup. If they ever switch to Shield Art during a combo, all you have to do is finish your Nair, and then you can short hop a Nair again, because he doesn't have great frame data in order to get you off of him. So even if it's not a true combo, at best he can like air dodge, but then you Nair, react to the air dodge, and then get like a down throw into another Nair, and just do that until he switches off or until Shield Art runs out, and that is huge in my opinion. He doesn't quite have the tools to get around everything. Otherwise, he's amazing as a sword character, but again, I feel like once Pikachu Pikachu gets in, he just takes so much damage and shielding or switching to shield art doesn't actually matter in this matchup, which is huge. The fact that Pikachu can edge guard and the fact that Pikachu again does so much damage, the fact that Pikachu has neutral B in order to like kind of get approaches and yes, his counter now can be shielded. So it's not like, oh, I can't, you know, do this thing if he's going to counter. So like, it's fine. In my opinion, the pressure in this matchup is just too much for Shulk to deal with. Although he can still randomly kill you at 40 or like, you know, nair forward air up B you with jump art. So like, it is still scary, but I do think it is Pikachu's favor because of the fact that you can abuse shield art super hard. Sonic was one of Pikachu's worst matchups in Brawl, if not his worst matchup, due to the fact that neutral was incredibly infuriating versus him, due to the fact that he could get out of disadvantage really easily, or rather, yeah, because he could spring, and also he could, you know, it was so hard to edge guard Sonic due to the fact that he had invincibility on spring, or a lot of invincibility on spring, and those two things are very different. Now, you can Thunder Jolt and actually get in on Sonic because he cannot spin dash shield cancel, which is huge in my opinion. The fact that you can edge guard him means that you can throw out back airs around the ledge when he has to spring, and it will hit him, which is amazing, and yes, he does have homing attack, which is an amazing option, but I feel like the more Sonic puts himself in the air, the more susceptible he is to getting hit by Pikachu and just taking damage by Pikachu, and Sonic's damage output in general is a little bit lower than in Smash 4, and it's also just less infuriating, so Pikachu having those options to edge guard to keep him in pressure still, like, Nair Loops are so good, so your damage output in general against Sonic is going to be much higher, you know, the fact that you can kill much easier off of either edge guards or, again, just Nair Up Smash Dash Tech things like I've mentioned a billion times by now in this video, you know, I do feel like a lot of the things that made this matchup frustrating in Smash 4 no longer exist. There are some new ones with homing attack and just with general sonic speed, but uh, also I feel like Thunder Jolt kind of just slows him down enough. The fact that your edge guarding is good, the fact that your combos, your combos and your damage are good, so so good for Pikachu is what I feel like puts this matchup in Pika's favor now, yay. The Toon Link Pikachu matchup honestly feels fairly similar because while you can combo Toon Link a little bit harder, his floatiness does make it fairly difficult to combo him compared to a lot of characters, so I don't exactly know how good that is in this matchup. You know, he did gain forward tilt as a move and back air is a little bit better, but Pikachu being short means back air is going to be fairly ineffective, so Pikachu just kind of does the same thing except is a little bit faster, so it's a little bit easier to catch Toon Link, and again, as I mentioned a billion times, it is easier to edge guard Toon Link due to the fact that back air sends backwards and down air sends spiking, like blah blah blah. Blah, blah, blah. So I feel like honestly, you know, it's hard for Toon Link to stay in advantage in this matchup as it was in Smash 4 due to the fact that you have Quick Attack, that you have Skull Bash. Uh, it's really difficult for Toon Link to pin Pikachu down, but if he does kind of get started, it is really difficult for Pikachu to get in, especially considering bombs still do stop Thunder Jolts. I don't know if they explode on Thunder Jolt contact. If they do, that matchup's kind of free and actually going to be worse. But if not, it eats the Thunder Jolt and keeps moving forward. But again, Pikachu has amazing neutral tools now that you don't necessarily need to just use Thunder Jolt and you can kind of just dash and like dash away if you gonna throw a bomb and things like that. So I do think this matchup is still Pika's favor. Edge guarding, damage output. I feel like killing is now also easier for Pika, obviously, in this matchup. So, you know, it's not going to be as big of a differential. Like, it's not like, oh man, I can't kill until 160. Oh, but they got bomb fair at 85 at the ledge. Like, no, like you will be able to kill this character now. So that makes it a lot easier. Villager cannot keep up with Pikachu's speed. His zoning is still decent in this matchup, although it seems a little bit easier to deal with Lloyd Rocket due to the fact, I honestly like pairing them over power shielding them in Smash 4 because like Slingshot isn't gonna be as annoying because you can hold Hold shield weight if they slingshot your shield you can then parry the uh the gyroid anyway or the lloyd rocket anyway so i think that is a huge deal for this matchup pikachu again can edge guard easier because backer always sends out so you're going to be able to get a lot easier rinse and repeats in this matchup you do get better combos in this game because of you know the nair loops and things like that whereas villager is kind of exactly the same character which means that
that bowling ball is still incredibly scary, which means that tree is still incredibly scary. You know, you don't have jab ass confirms anymore, but now jab is just a move that you can use in general, which is kind of nice. He does have the strong spikes with turnips, which can be fairly scary and the then lingers, but that move got worse in general because it's a little bit slower or by a lot slower. Like it's a lot slower. It's not as good of an out of shield option, but it still does linger for a while. So it is somewhat scary to play that in neutral, but I feel like Pikachu's neutral tools kind of outdo villagers. You kind of do more damage than villager. However, because of how scary bowling ball and tree are near the ledge, I am going to put this matchup in plus one. I do think other than that, it's plus two, but those two things, I might just die at 40 because I decided to like lose my jump off of like a random forward in center stage and then I get bowling balls and I die. So like, that's not cool. Wolf honestly has a lot of the problems that I talked about against Fox, where I feel like Pikachu's advantage state is amazing versus him. Pikachu's neutral, although Wolf does have better neutral tools than the other spaces by like a significant amount. I still feel like Pikachu wins neutral due to the fact that you have Thunder Jolt forward air backer, which are all safe on shield. Whereas a lot of times you can punish Wolf for like doing landing nares, landing fairies and things like that. Although his blaster is incredible in this matchup. Like it is so, so good. So be worried about that. However, you do have again, long combos because he's a fast faller and he's kind of heavy. So you do have long nair loops. You still can edge guard him. His recovery isn't the best. However, if you mess up, you might die. So keep that in mind. And also his uppy is like ginormous. So if you don't edge guard it perfectly, you might just get hit and die at like 65. That happened against Zachary, one of the sets that I was like, I should have won because I like down aired and then I lost that to up B and I just died really early because it always sends you backwards for some godforsaken reason. Uh, so you do have to play very careful versus Wolf, but I feel like once you kind of learn those little intricacies of like, oh, I'm going to double jump down air instead of just fall on him with a downer. So my hitbox displacement is different. That matchup becomes a little bit easier, a little bit better. And like, it still struggles for Wolf to kill you because you are fairly small. You have so many different ledge options. Uh, it's difficult for Wolf to kind of pin you down it's hard to get like fair back here because you're so small but his damage output is really good I don't quite think it's as good as Pikachu's in this matchup and again the volatility due to the fact that Pikachu can edge guard like matchups that you can edge guard fairly easily I almost always put in Pikachu's favor just because it's like oh well it's an even matchup and you're kind of like both fighting your game oops you died at 30 that time as wolf because haha you accidentally used your double jump to get out of a combo and like that can happen Zachary's a god though and finally we're to the even matchups and I did say that this wouldn't be a three hour video but I did not guarantee that it would not be a one hour video so anyway let us get started with the next one, which is the evens or plus ones. I'm not exactly sure yet because I just feel like the matchups are very like interesting and in depth. And I, and, you know, the game hasn't been out long enough, in my opinion, for me to get a solid opinion of these matchups. Of these characters, I do think I have the most experience with Inkling due to the fact that I've played Cosmos in multiple occasions, but either in friendlies or in tournament. And you know, both characters have a lot on each other. It is somewhat hard to edge guard Inkling, although you can get a couple, a couple hits here and there. But you're generally not going to be killing Inkling off of an edge guard due to the fact that their recovery is so so good. You know both of their neutrals are incredibly good because you have you know inklings incredible incredible dash which makes thunder or which makes Thunder Jolt a little bit less useful. They have obviously back air, which is one of the best spacing aerials in the entire game. However, Pikachu does have out of shield options against that, such as Nair and such as back air. So you can get your punishes. Pikachu has Nair loops. Inkling has other throw combos. Inkling has roller to potentially steal stocks very early. Although the nerf does make that only happen at about 100 to 110 at earliest, at least for someone with my type of mashing. So keep that as you will. You know, up throw up air is a very, very, very pretty much impossible kill confirm on Pikachu. There's literally a 1% window, no rage, no ink. So I don't know if it ever actually will kill and if I get hit by that like they got it like that's crazy but you know Inkling does have very solid moves down tilt is incredible for two framing Pikachu forward air is amazing for intercepting if I have to recover in specific ways or just in general you know it is punishable but at the same time Inkling can also punish you know a lot of things Pikachu does like dash attack which is an incredible tool it's like oh I'll get grabbed by some characters you know suddenly Inkling up smashes that and that is a huge deal uh you know or get grabs and they have a kill throw it is very easy for both characters to kind of live until like 150 160 in this matchup and then eventually get a kill with like up throw or back throw or something like that. So, you know, very volatile matchup, very grindy type of matchup. I don't know if it's even or if it's slight Pikachu favor because I feel like the damage output overall is better for Pikachu. Yes, if you get inked, it can be really annoying because you will take so much damage, but also Pikachu is pretty good at playing passive. And so if you have the ink on, you kind of camp with Thunder Jolts or kind of just dash around. It is hard for Inkling to really aggress onto you. Inkling is definitely a character that kind of enjoys getting approached on more and then will punish you for it. But at the same time, Pikachu having Thunder Jolt makes that not necessarily the case because it's just such a good option for approaching that it can kind of stuff inkling which I could feel like if I use that better I could see that being plus one but I could also easily definitely see it being an even matchup. 
Link is definitely a character I could see being an even matchup due to the fact that you have to worry about so much if Bomb is on the ground or in the air, like slightly bouncing, it still has its hitbox, which can be absolutely obnoxious. You know, you always have like, there's a huge area of stage that now Link always kind of controls unless you pick up the bomb and throw it off stage, in which case, if he ever gets space, he can kind of pluck another one and throw it anyway, so it's not really that good of an option. You know, he can't kill you fairly early with things like up smash, up air, up yeah, the shield, forward tilt on the ledge. You know, those options can be very scary, and he just plays a very solid neutral game in general has mediocre combos you know he has like an air grab down throw up tilt at lower percents he kind of loses them at high percent but he does so much knockback and a decent amount of damage anyway that Pikachu will kind of have to force his way in to playing against Link but once you do get in as Pikachu I feel like Link does take a lot of damage again you have near loops you have things that hit him off stage I feel like without tether it is actually fairly easy to edge guard Link even though up B is like huge in this game but I still have traded up B with down air which you know results in Pikachu killing Link and that is going to be how that works however you do have your bomb recoveries off stage, which I feel like are fairly difficult for Pikachu to mess with. Uh, pretty much all what I do is like I try to like put a thunder wall where I think they're going to fly like towards the stage and to just hit them back out so you get another opportunity to hit them. But so really honestly this matchup comes down to if I un start understanding bomb a little bit more and I start understanding how to edge guard link a little bit better, I could see moving into plus one. But if those are just actually difficult and actually really uh, really obnoxious to deal with as the game goes on, I could definitely see this being an even matchup for sure. Lucas was a character I ended up putting in Pikachu advantage in Smash 4, but honestly, I don't understand this character quite enough in this game to solidly put him one area or the other because Magnet can be annoying, so you don't really have access to Thunder Jolt. PK Fire and PK Freeze, if they hit, can be absolutely obnoxious and just infuriating to play against. I don't understand how good his hitboxes are or how good of like get off me options his Nair out of Shield is, so that is a huge deal because if Pikachu can just kind of get in and do a bunch of damage and then keep him in disadvantage, I feel like it would be in Pikachu's favor. I don't know how good Magnet is at stalling, so I feel like the tools Pikachu has can easily easily beat Lucas, but at the same time, I understand if those tools aren't as effective as I think they could be, I could definitely imagine this matchup being even, because like it's hard to hit Lucas sometimes, he's really evasive. Even though he doesn't have throw combos anymore, he still has three kill throws, he still has pretty good aerials. He had like the double jump Zare, in my opinion, is crazy because it kind of counters, uh, you know, Thunder Jolt running, which is pretty big, either that or just magneting it. So, you know, Pikachu's neutral in this matchup is actually fairly awkward, you're gonna have to jump a lot more, but then if you jump, you can get forward aired or up aired or back aired or like, God forbid, like up smashed. So it's kind of like a weird little neutral interaction I don't exactly know how that plays out yet due to my lack of experience in this matchup but you know I could definitely see it being even also I could see it being in Pikachu's favor I don't think Lucas would win that matchup mostly due to the fact that Pikachu can still edge guard fairly easily like you can edge guard tethers because you have back air now especially because of back air down air beats PK Thunder if it's flying towards you so it's just it's really difficult for Lucas to get back and also I don't think it's that easy for Lucas to get down but we shall see how that turns out in the meta later Meta Knight is a character I got experience with against Abadongo when I was in Japan, and both characters' tools kind of counteract each other. I feel like our neutrals are very similar because we both have running down tilt, which are incredible and can confirm into a lot, you know, him into more down tilts or dash attack, me into dash attack or dash grab. You know, our combo game is still fairly strong on each other, although I think Pikachu's is a little bit stronger on Meta Knight's than vice versa. However, uh, you know, I feel like one thing that's actually very different for me to say is Meta Knight's edge guarding is better against Pikachu than vice versa, because it's actually pretty hard to edge guard Meta Knight due to his multiple multiple jumps, down B, side B, like those are all pretty hard to mess with. You can pretty much, like I pretty much just kind of throw out Thunder Jolts and Thunder in order to get edge guards unless they like use all of their jumps and I know that I can hit them with like a down air or a back air. But Meta Knight can tornado and stay near the ledge and two frame Pikachu very, very easily. And if it doesn't work, just kind of go back on stage and be completely safe. That back air neutral air can be really annoying for Pikachu to deal with. And yes, you do have multiple angles, but if the Meta Knight guesses right, you might either take a lot of damage or die at fairly early percents. So I do think that Meta Knight has a lot of tools in order to do good, like we both kind of don't like short characters. We both have pretty strong ground neutrals, pretty strong air neutrals. Uh, you know, the disadvantage for both of us is really good because Meta Knight has so many jumps since like down air is amazing and down air is just a great tool in general, especially in neutral versus Pikachu. And we both like can deal a decent amount of damage to each other, but I feel like Pikachu's killing is a little bit more consistent with Nair up smash, with uh, tech chases, with dash attack, like those things are crazy. Meta Knight kind of has to rely on edge guards in this matchup, and again, Pikachu very hard to edge guard, although it is possible, you know, so I don't know, like, I feel like also up out of shield is also a pretty good option for Meta Knight, but the combos won't be killing you as easily, uh, I feel like, in this matchup, because Pikachu is so small and able to SDI out, so I wasn't really dying to too many things, but at the same time, like, I don't know, it's either even or plus one, depending on how safe Pikachu can play against Meta Knight to not die when Pikachu is at high percents, because that is a huge, huge deal, but also remember the fact that Tornado will, like, beat out Thunder Jolts, linger on them, and then still hit you, so be careful about that. That. 
Game & Watch is kind of an awkward matchup because there were a lot of things that made this matchup difficult for Pikachu in Smash 4, being the fact that you couldn't edgeguard him that easily, being the fact that 2 Toot was a thing so you would just die at like 85, and uh, I feel like the edgeguarding is a little bit easier now because down air spikes and so you can just kind of throw it out a little bit more, and also back air, like if they don't up B immediately you're going to be able to hit them off stage and kind of get continuous edgeguards on Game & Watch. Also the fact that I feel like Pikachu in this game can kind of pressure Game & Watch a lot easier due to the fact that up smash has changed, the fact that you have to release your up smash and it's not super armor on frame like two or three like it used to now it's on the release of the move which is huge means that Pikachu is able to actually hit buttons a lot more in Game & Watch's face and the fact that you don't have forward air means that pretty much only down air is going to be like the move that you have to be worried about as Pikachu as well as losing Toot Toot in my opinion was a huge deal because now Pikachu will only really die to like raw smash attacks and if you get that or like a bomb and if you get that you know you got it but Pikachu is very evasive very difficult to kind of pin down and get those type of things on him in my opinion if Pikachu plays passive I feel like this matchup is pretty easy for Pikachu but again Game Watch's damage output still pretty high his edge trapping due to the fact that Chef you can angle it now is actually incredible so those two things are very difficult I don't know how much of an impact they make compared to Smash 4 and I don't like I'm pretty sure that all the things that I mentioned that Game Watch lost are like huge deals in this matchup so I could definitely imagine it being in Pikachu's favor but also even seems to make sense as well and now on to the matchups that are probably or and now on to the matchups that are solid Solidly even starting off with Lucina. So I mentioned a lot of things about Martha. It's like, oh, Pikachu can get in Marth's face, but I feel like Lucina having the sword be a strong from everywhere, kind of, it doesn't matter if you get into Lucina's face necessarily because things like Uppy out of shield, things like Nair out of shield, just always being able to like swat you away and it doesn't have to be at max range in order for it to be the maximum efficiency makes this matchup a bit easier for Lucina. The fact that Lucina can consistently kill, the fact that Lucina has, you know, just like general strong moves can actually edge guard Pikachu fairly well due to the fact that she has long lingering hitboxes that will always be very strong, like back air kills really early if you guess the quick attack angle right, and that can be somewhat problematic for Pikachu. However, as the sorties have always been, their disadvantage isn't the greatest, it's not bad, but a character like Pikachu, which has one of the strongest advantage states in the entire game, you grab Lucina and you nair loop her, and then you like kind of hit her off stage. One, you can edge guard Lucina because back air will still trade with up B as will down air, so that's problematic for them because you can actually spike or get like the outward hitbox of down air, which will kill, like if Lucina doesn't have a jump, Lucina should die off stage pretty much much every single time. But also the fact that quick, like the thing that makes this matchup not disadvantaged, because I know a lot of people are like, how is that not disadvantaged? That's actually crazy, uh, is the fact that quick attack, like if, if Lucina jumps at you, or any sword character, but Lucina in this case jumps at you, uh, you can always kind of stay outside of the sword range, and whenever she has to land, you just kind of quick attack through her and then back under her, you hit her. And you know, I said the same thing in Smash 4, I thought that was a huge deal in this game. So I honestly, like, I really enjoy playing this matchup because it's very chess-like, it's very position-based, it's very, like, just really, it's smart. Like both characters have to outplay each other so hard in order to get their advantages, which in my opinion is very much so the definition of an even matchup. And again, if Lucina misses an anti-air, you get Nair up smash. You can edgeguard as Pikachu, you can, you know, get Nair, or you can get Thunder Jolt pressure, and yeah, you can get counters, and yes, you can swap them away, but if you guess that, then you like stop and forward smash, and there's just a lot of things that can happen in this matchup. So in my opinion, it is an even matchup. Both have good movement, both have pretty good advantage states, both can edgeguard each other fairly well, though Pikachu can edgeguard a little bit easier. Lucina's killing is a bit more consistent than Pikachu's, so that is the edge I will give her in that matchup, but I think this matchup is very, very fun to play. I do think the definition of an even matchup. Mario was somewhat problematic in Smash 4, however, I realized more so at the end that if you play patient, it is hard for Mario to do anything, and that is the same thing in this game. I feel like if you play patient, Mario's approach options aren't the greatest, although back air and air are fairly safe on shield, and forward tilt being a better option for Mario is kind of nice, and like running down tilt is going to have a pretty good tool in neutral, and if you get hit by that, you take a lot of damage. But other than that, you know, I feel like the matchups are very similar in general, because Pikachu does a little bit more damage than he used to and is a little bit better at edge guarding and a little bit better at killing. However, Mario still does a bunch of damage off of throws, still has Flood to interrupt things, still has Cape to reflect Thunder Jolts. This character has a lot of tools that work for beating Pikachu, but now, you know, especially with the buffs back air sending backwards, you know, down tilt dash attack being a combo dash attack in general, being able to anti-air and kill, forward smash being buffed on the ledge for some reason. I don't know why that made that move linger for 15 frames. I feel like Pikachu has more tools in order to fight against Mario, so I do think this matchup was leaning more towards even at the end of Smash 4, and now I feel like with like landing there, up smash, landing there combos in general, like Nair loops, you know, your damage output in this matchup now kind of equals Mario's as opposed to getting like greatly outshined by it. And that is going to be a definitive factor for me to putting this matchup towards even as opposed to in Mario's favor. Mewtwo was one of Pikachu's most difficult matchups in Smash 4 due to the fact that down tilt was broken in that matchup. Like down tilt, Nair, and uh, Shadow Ball were just absolutely plagues to this character because I feel like you can never get in other than with 
back air out of shield, but in that game, back air out of shield didn't really lead to that much. However, even if exactly the same things are the case, which isn't, and I'll get into that in a little bit, you know, the fact that you can now back air out of shield, down tilt, and lead into a full confirm, whether it's, you know, back air into up air, nair, grab, into like full combo, or just like back air, back air, up tilt, or up air, back air, and get like 30% off of like one neutral win, that is huge in this matchup. The fact that Mewtwo's disadvantage is worse in this matchup is also, again, huge. I feel like Pikachu can kind of juggle Mewtwo fairly easily due to the fact that there's only one air dodge now. It's not just like air dodge, air dodge, air dodge, and like drifting random directions that you can't really see. So Pikachu will be able to juggle Mewtwo way harder. Pikachu will be able to punish Mewtwo way harder. Pikachu when they can obviously still edge guard Mewtwo, especially now that side B isn't as good. Like if they side B out there, you can kind of actually skull bash into the Mewtwo and get a kill if they're like near the blast zone. Pretty early percents, which is kind of nice. Mewtwo still does have a lot of good tools in this matchup, such as the ones that I mentioned after, like already in down tilt, shadow ball, neutral air, but neutral air is now worse due to the fact that you can't like nair drag down like down tilt or nair drag down footstool so you will get like nair fared which again that is way way better than like nair drag down down tilt like double jump up air fair like that used to be so so much more damage and Mewtwo doesn't have access to that unless it's not at a shield if it's like a landing neutral air but again those are the things that would be punished pretty hard by Pikachu so I feel like this matchup was borderline minus two or minus two in Smash 4 and you know the fact that back air is so much better the fact that Pikachu can kill a little bit more consistently again with all the things I've mentioned I feel like those two things in general make this matchup a lot easier for Pikachu more so like an even matchup. Peach is an interesting matchup. I do potentially think that Pikachu might end up winning this matchup later on, but right now I do think it is an even matchup for sure. Peach's damage output has obviously been greatly increased with her increase with her better combos and like her just damage output in general is just ridiculous. Her moves individually do so much damage. She's good at killing because she has things like neutral B on quick attack, which is actually huge in this matchup. You can't just quick attack off the ledge for free because you will get hit by Toad and die like 100% off the ledge. Obviously she has back air, which is way stronger and just better and like bigger and easier to hit. Neutral air can still kill. Forward air is obviously a menace of a kill move. So this character has a lot, but I feel like Pikachu kind of stops the general normal game that she wants to do due to Thunder Jolt. She can't just float when she wants to because of the fact that you can end up kind of just hitting her for it. Like, if, rather, if you Thunder Jolt, she has to float, and if she has to float, then you up air. And if she shields, then you can guess right or do a fairly safe air like a forward air or a back air on her shield, in which case then you can kind of play the pressure game. And Pikachu still gets a lot of damage onto Peach and can still keep Peach in disadvantage. However, it is a little bit harder to keep her in disadvantage than a lot of other characters due to float, due to landing downer, due to landing fair, just like counter, just a lot of things like that in general make it fairly difficult for Pikachu to play the game he wants to play, and then Peach, because of Pikachu's options, can't exactly play the game that she wants to play. So both of us kind of have our little game disrupted, uh, and we both have a lot of options even outside of that. But for right now, I do think this matchup is even. I could see it being Pikachu's favorite though, because Samsora, I'm coming for you. Pichu is a matchup that is very heavily based on the first stock. I feel like whichever character takes the first stock is at a huge advantage, and both characters have so many tools for taking the first stocks. Obviously, Pichu kills a little bit easier than Pikachu, and by a little bit, I mean a decent amount. Forward Smash is stronger, Forward Tilt off the ledge, Back Air is stronger, you know, if he can get, like, Thunder confirms. This character has a lot of options for this character. However, Pichu being so light means that things like Nair, Down Tilt, and the Tech Chase can lead to stocks quite early. Nair, Up Smash leads to talk, I think, like, 92 if I hit the Nair, like, 92 or something like that. That's really, really early. Pikachu can still edge guard Pikachu due to the fact that, you know, no hitbox, although that is kind of more of a guess, so I'm not going to say, like, rely on that all the time, because that's difficult. You know, Pikachu can be a little more passive in this matchup compared to Pichu due to the fact that my Thunder Jolt doesn't hurt myself, whereas Pichu's does, but Pichu's does more damage. Pichu does more damage in general, but also, again, relative to their stock percentage, like their average stock loss, I feel like the damage output's about even, because Pikachu, still, if he gets a hit at zero, will do between 30 to 35%, whereas Pichu will do about 35 to 40%. Uh, so, and, and then, like after that, Pichu's damage output gets a little bit more consistent, but Pikachu's can also juggle Pichu a little bit easier than vice versa. It's a really interesting matchup. I want to get more experience in this because I honestly don't have that much. I definitely talked to Void before and after our set, and we both still think it's an even matchup, so I'm going to put myself based on that, but this matchup can be obnoxious. You really have to practice your Pichu combos, like Pichu-specific combos, because the fall speed plus the weight make it really obnoxious to combo him, so be careful about that, Pikachu players. Snake is a very slow and steady matchup. You have to really understand your spots when it comes to dealing with Snake because you have to not get hit by grenades, you have to understand what is punishable, what isn't, when to give up space just for the sake of it because it's not worth contesting and being wrong. You have to learn how to edge guard him, how to juggle him. There's so, so much to this matchup and if you're not a Brawl player, this is going to be incredibly, incredibly difficult. I don't think I really want to make an anti-Snake video seeing as my best friend play Snake and I don't want to like be like, hey everyone, be easier to beat my friend, but this matchup is so, so intricate, but I feel like Pikachu's height, Pikachu's combo game, Pikachu's advantage state, and the ability to kind of pressure Snake in areas that a lot of other characters can't 
does make this matchup fairly even. I know I thought it was kind of like in Snake's favor at the beginning of the game, but then I kind of understood how to play around grenades a little bit better, a little bit more. Like I learned all the options that Snake could do that I wasn't used to from, uh, you know, Brawl to Smash Ultimate. So now in Smash Ultimate, I do feel like I have a pretty good grasp on this matchup. I do think the matchup's even. Snake has a lot of tools for racking up a lot of damage. If you get out camped by this character, you will take so much damage and you will just rack up and you die at like 95 to an up tilt. And you obviously, if somehow it gets to later, you can either die to up smash or Nikita, which is the best move in the game. Forward tilt, back air, things like that. Also, if you, God forbid, live until 160 somehow against this character, uh, you know, you can get guaranteed down through up tilted which is not fun however Pikachu can kill snake pretty easily too if you read a beer versus grenade or a lack of a beer versus grenade or however snake is landing you can pretty much always win with up smash or down smash which can both kill very early if you get a nair at the ledge if snake is camping at the ledge and get a down smash that will kill at about 110 120 uh, around that percent with no rage which is absolutely huge obviously you do have nair up smash dash tech all the things I've been saying before but this matchup is definitely very position based very momentum based and both characters can kind of neutralize each other's momentum while also kind of getting their own it's really interesting I love this matchup. It's very intricate. It's very fun for me to play, even if it may be frustrating for a lot of people because he's kind of just running away and throwing grenades. Wario is a matchup I feel like both characters kind of can run at each other and do a bunch of damage or also not run at each other at all and do no damage and kind of fight for positioning. Pikachu camping with Thunder Jolts means that Wario has to jump in similar to the Peach matchup without float. You know, you can also start like anti-airing with up airs or back airs or neutral airs and things like that if they're trying to land on you. So you can kind of control the momentum from that way. Wario can use his amazing aerial mobility to kind of weave in and out of what Pikachu wants to do and get hits and then get a lot of damage because of it. God forbid you get a landing there into like up air, up air, up air. Or if you get a grab, you get grab, up throw, up air. If you land on a platform, you can get another up air. Both characters kind of just do so much damage to each other. It is ridiculous. Pikachu has the X factor of potentially you can just randomly get some edge guards due to the fact that Wario is a fairly edge guardable character, assuming they're not in the absolute corner, like the up left corner, up right corner, where they can bike fairly safely and then kind of land. If they ever have to go low, Pikachu has the X factor of always being able to get that damage whereas Wario has the X factor of Waft, which is obviously a huge thing. Although I think Pikachu can avoid Waft. I know when I played Tweak at uh, Genesis, I literally only got hit by two Wafts in a five game set, which is kind of insane uh, considering how many Wafts he gets on everyone else. He typically gets about one a game. And the fact that I was able to only get hit twice, both in one game, but I kind of did like stupid punishable things both times. It wasn't even like a combo into it. It was kind of like an, oh, I messed up. He Wafted me as a punish. That was kind of good. So I feel like Waft is fairly neutralized in the Pikachu matchup due to the fact that I'm small. It's hard to hit you with like, it's hard to hit Pikachu with a bunch of the combo starters that you want as Wario and so he's gonna more so be getting his kill confirms off of like back air on like approaches or like down tilt dash attack on punishes and things like that so it's pretty interesting but I do feel like this matchup we both have enough tools that is an even matchup for sure. Yoshi is a matchup I was fairly unsure. Yoshi is a matchup I was fairly unsure about, uh, you know, at the beginning of this game because Yoshi seemed to have a lot of tools that were very, very strong versus Pikachu. But as I became a slightly more passive player, as I became slightly more bait and punishing, kind of just solid neutral game and solid juggling, I feel like this character got a little bit easier to play because Yoshi, you know, has camping tools in terms of egg, has good hitboxes with like back air, down tilt, fair, nair, things like that. But I feel like Pikachu can punish almost everything that he has uh, on shield or like kind of preempt it if I'm expecting like a forward air in forward air range, things like that. Uh, you know, Pikachu can dash out of forward air range and then dash back in and dash attack or get a dash grab. He can do so much damage with Nair Loops because you can't double jump out of Nair Loops still, although you can sometimes if you mess up, so you have to be very, very tight with them. But even then, if Yoshi wastes a double jump, you can still kind of like hit him for it later, kind of keep juggling him. Pikachu can edge guard Yoshi, assuming that, you know, they don't use a double jump in an incredibly, incredibly perfect spot. So that's that's really difficult for Yoshi. However, Yoshi does have amazing combos. He just, he traps out damage. He just does so much damage to Pikachu. It is actually ridiculous. You know, like two combos by Yoshi and you could potentially be a death percent because, oh, one of them was a Nair into forward tilt, up tilt, up air, you're at 40. Now, the next one was a, like, a weak Nair into tech chase, down tilt, into down smash. Now you're at 80. Now fair onto land on platform, up smash is going to kill you. So, like, there's, this character can do a lot of things. However, Pikachu can play passive enough, can play campy enough, can play Play, you know kind of that that bait and punish type of style and I feel like that's very very good versus Yoshi I think Yoshi is an amazing character but after playing it a lot with Rotsuku uh, from Japan I learned a lot a lot about this matchups and I feel like you know you kind of have to pick your spots very very smart in this matchup so I could potentially maybe see a minus one at some point but I do think after learning it that decent amount you know that matchup is a little bit easier for Pikachu than what I originally thought especially after losing to Squirk uh, so I do think this matchup is even. Young Link has a lot of similarities in the matchup to Toon Link however I feel like Young Link's speed and better boxing tools do make this matchup even as opposed to in Pikachu's favor. Nair being an amazing tool, Arrow being an 
amazing confirm. Like, he's so fast. He can actually just kind of fight you on the ground. He can throw up buttons, back air, nair, up air. Like, they're all so scary to get hit by. Young Link, obviously, also a small character. And Pikachu, not a big fan of small characters because it's kind of hard to forward air in neutral. So you're going to have to mostly back air or just play the ground game. You know, the Young Link is so fast, you don't really get time to teach old camp. And if he does give you the space, then okay, he pulls out a bomb and then throws a boomerang. And now you have all the tools as Young Link available to you to kind of play your neutral game, get your thing started. Arrow as a landing tool is amazing. The fact that he can still tether the ledge is great for his recovery. His recovery in general goes so far. He has up, he had a shield, which is pretty good. If you do anything unsafe on shield, you get like up, up air to low percents, which can lead into like a pretty good advantage day for Young Link. And this, honestly, one of the matchups that I actually don't like uh, being in disadvantage just because there's so many projectiles everywhere that can all lead to death. God forbid he gets like an arrow to arrow up B combo. Like when you're near the ledge, you're going to die so, so early. Although if you avoid a lot of those projectiles, you will live a long time. But at the same time, it's hard for Pikachu to hit Young Link. So I don't know. This matchup seems very volatile on both ways because they both can get such crazy things on each other. Like Pikachu's combos, so strong on Young Link. Pikachu's edge guards, I feel like very strong on Young Link. But at the same time, Young Link, it's really hard to hit. But if Pikachu is hard to hit, then like Young Link will get his damage and won't get his kills. So it's a really interesting little dynamic. So I do think that uh, Pikachu, in my opinion, does fairly well in this matchup. So I think it is going to be even. Uh, you know, both have a lot of tools against each other, but nothing too crazy. And finally, for the first matchup, I think Pikachu might lose other than Yoshi, which I already talked about, is Ness. Ness is so hard to play because a bait and punish style doesn't exactly work on him due to the fact that you might just get hit by Piki Fire. It's being aggressive against him doesn't really work because Nair just stuffs you out and does so much damage. His magnet is so hard to like deal with because of the fact that it just, it's so good for his disadvantage state. So Pikachu's advantage state is a little bit weaker. His neutral isn't that strong because a lot of your aerials can get stuffed out by Nair. You can't exactly Thunder Jolt run due to the fact that he can magnet jump Nair. Uh, you can bait those type of Nairs, but at the same time, like baiting him is so difficult because if he just decides to be patient or like not bite when he thinks you're going to do an aerial, then kind of nothing happens and you don't exactly have all the tools that you normally have in terms of like Thunder Jolt in terms of quick attack because quick attack also gets beat out by Nair. Like this character's Nair is such a big hindrance for Pikachu and also the fact that down smash, the fact that you can hold it, the ledge that you can charge it, it's so hard for Pikachu to recover. You have to have enough space to quick attack onto stage, which isn't honestly normally the case. So it's very, very difficult for Pikachu to kind of get what you want started, which is bad. However, Pikachu can edgeguard the hell out of this character. And if you are on it, if you kind of get your reads on the player, then you will be able to juggle Ness. You will be able to edgeguard Ness. However, I do feel like that is more of a player versus player thing as opposed to a character versus character thing, which is why I'm leaning more towards at this point, minus one, I could definitely see it being even, you know, I was never really the best at the Ness matchup. I definitely went Samus against it a decent amount in Smash 4. Uh, you know, I'm looking for information. If you are a Pikachu that has a lot of information on Ness, please let me know. I would love to understand this matchup more, but I do think this matchup is one of the first matchups that I think Pikachu might lose. And the other matchup, the other only matchup Pikachu might lose is Olimar. Olimar is small. He can camp you. His recovery is good and variable, so it's kind of difficult to edge guard him. He can kill, he has safe moves on shield, and he outranges you like a sword character. So pretty much anything you need to beat Pikachu, Olimar has the only negative to this character is if you kill his Pikmin or you can get him in disadvantage, sometimes Pikachu can just do so much damage. If you avoid down air, if you, you know, time things for whistle, that's a lot of times like you can get up airs and up airs and up airs and back airs, and you can still get edge guards on this character because there is obviously no hitbox on it. That is very, very important. However, I just feel like, you know, it's also impossible to get Pikmin off of you in this game as Pikachu uh, because of the fact that you don't have the neutral that you did in Smash 4. Like, that was actually one of the matchups that I feel like Smash 4 Nair is better than us uh, Ultimate Nair, although Ultimate Nair, in my opinion, much favored overall as, like, you heard, like, me talk about a bunch of characters like, oh, my combo game is better now, my damage output's better, so I think this matchup's easier. Olimar is not that character because he's light and he's somewhat floaty, so you're not gonna really be able to edgeguard him anyway. I don't exactly know how you're supposed to safely kill Olimar because you can't exactly land on an Olimar because you will get up smashed out of shield uh you know dash attack is really unsafe because you get grabbed and that can kill you really early if it's a blue pikmin it just seems so hard to pick your spots against this character this honest this matchup honestly the more i think about it might be minus two olimar is such a strong character such a good character but also i've never had a plethora of olimar experience so i might be missing some huge things that i'm not aware of but i think this character is absolutely frightening and yeah that is going to be about it for this one i hope you all enjoyed i know that was a lot of information sorry if i talk fast it's a lot of information and when I start getting into the nitty gritty of things, I do tend to talk fast and I apologize. I am trying to work on it, especially, you know, over two hours of recording. I don't know how long the edited video is going to be. This was a lot to talk about. And, you know, feel free to disagree with me. I'm sure that a lot of people do. I know Squirk thinks Yoshi wins. I know that MBD might think Snake wins. You know, I know that Samsora might think Peach wins. There's a lot of little things about this matchup chart that may go, you know, plus one or like minus one 
here or there. You know, I could end up being wrong, but I think that I'm pretty good at theory crafting to the point where like I kind of understand a lot of matchups, even if I haven't played a bunch of them at top level, although I may be missing a thing or two, and obviously as buffs and nerfs happen in future patches and a DLC happens, this might change anyway. But yeah, thank you all for watching. As always, social media, Panda, and partner stuff is down below, and I will see you all next time.